Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Jamie's Photography. So, um, black and white, yeah, black and white and black and white drama. That's something I enjoy very much. And when you get in that situation where you, you really don't have uh, a fantastic uh, sky or fantastic weather, where it's a bit overcast, so lacking clarity um, and, and, and contrast, then what we can do is we can take, take an image and, and, and give it real black and white drama. And what I'm gonna show you today is uh, how we're gonna take this picture of Tower Bridge, which is one of my most favorite subjects in London and uh, and turn it into some black and white drama. So let's get started. So I've imported this uh, DNG into, into Lightroom. Um, and I'm just gonna click reset, make sure we're back right at the beginning. Um, and I'm gonna go through the, the standard workflow that I tend to use, uh, which is where I start off with um, firstly getting the, uh, the, the the sort of transform tool used to give the perspective that we need to just make sure that the image is, is something you actually want to work on. So I'm going to click the auto in transform module here just to see how that works. Well, not really too well. It, the two towers are <clears throat> pulling away from each other slightly. So, so I'm going to go over to guided um, and then I'll be able to come in here and draw some lines. Sometimes you click guided and the, the line drawing isn't available and that's because this, this little um, icon here is, is, is illuminated and that just means that you're working with the image, not the actual guided function. So click on that to get the lines that you need. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick two parallel lines that we want to try to keep these two to towers parallel. So I'm gonna go to the top of this, this tower here and I'm gonna run right down to the center of that one. I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to go pick the center of that tower there. And I'm going to run down to the, the center of that at the bottom. There we go. And, uh, and I still feel that that's pulling away a little bit. So what I can do is I can adjust the bottom of this line um, until I feel that we, 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 we've got, well, I think there seems to work quite well. So um, I, you can put a, a straight line across as well if you wanted along the bank line to see if that would be, make it straight, to pull it straight. Um, but uh, in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna delete that um, because I'm gonna use the, um, the crop tool in a minute where I can uh, then use the rotate tool to get to where I want. So I'm going to accept, I'm going to accept that. I'm then gonna go into crop now what I don't want is this wall. I thought initially that I wanted some sort of leading line, but the wall isn't isn't particularly pretty. Um, so I'm gonna come up a little bit from the bottom here and I'm gonna come over and just take, just gonna get the towers in the center of the image here. Uh, bit of wall there we can deal with in a, in a little while. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'm gonna maybe bring that down a little bit from the top there just to, I do want to click done when I'm where I want to be. Yep, yeah. and I think I'm going to work. I'm going to work with that. So I'm just going to get rid of this bottom section here and this left hand section by using the little the little uh, pyramids to give myself working space. Um, now you see this shot. It's thirteenth of a second. It was shot on on a tripod F10 ISO uh, 100 on my 24 to 105 f4 lens. Uh, on my my Sony A7, um, yeah, A7R2. This was that I shot this one with. So, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to tidy up firstly some some dust spots on here. Now, to do that, you can use the uh, the the spot healing uh, tool here, spot removal. And if you click on that, you can you could you could start going around making your your brush just a little bit bigger than the dust uh, spots and then you could click to remove them but a little a little good tip is down the bottom here you'll find visualize spots and a slider that you've got here and if you click on that uh, you get this this black and white image which you can move the slider to to realize more or less and what you can see then is you can see these dust spots much more clearly 
So make your brush just a little bit bigger than than the, the dust spots you've got and go, go around and, and click on those to remove them. Yeah, I think that's all of them. And when then when you're done, you can click done. You can undo the visualized spots just to make sure that you can't see any others in the sky there. So um, I don't know whether that's one there, but if it is, I'll get rid of that one as well. Right, so then you click done. And now you've got an image without without all the spots and marks in it. So let's, let's really dig into how we'll process this image then. So we're going into the basic module here. Um, and we're going to we're going to bring down the highlights. We're going to open up the shadows. We're going to do our black and whites. We do that by holding down the Option or Alt key, and then we grab the sliders. Now, as you watch in the top right corner there, the histogram. As I move the whites up, you'll see that the whole histogram is moving to the right. And if you keep going until you start to see some white dots, which we can see in the centre here, which is the lights. That's okay, little spots of light for the, the bright lights. But what you don't want like this is it's starting to show uh, main areas of the sky. And you'll notice on the histogram that the triangle in the top right corner is illuminated. So it's white and then it's blue and then it's off. So you want it in the off position. You do not want to go too far. So you can see that's brightened the image up quite a bit. We do the same with the blacks. So optional alt key, we take the blacks down and you can see there's a bit of black creeping in there. If we go too far, again, the white triangle at the bottom end of the histogram will start to illuminate. And if I come up there, you'll see it goes red, yellow, and white. So um, I'm gonna go there about on the red. So we are just clipping the black slightly on this pole here. So next things to do, we, we, we've worked through on the basics there. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast, not too much. So bring it in there um, and that's looking that's looking pretty flat so it's like a two-dimensional image at the moment and what we really want to do is add some depth to this and I and I purposely uh, kept this broken post in the in the foreground to give us something to work with um, to, to actually give us a foreground we've got the background you can see the city of London behind um, so what we want to do now is build that depth into this image so one of the things I like to do is is my day to night technique where I will darken an image and then relight it. Um, and I'm not necessarily going to focus on the light fittings when I do it this time, so that the spotlights and the lights that light the bridge. But what I will do is create um, a sort of scene that looks like the bridge is sort of semi-illuminated. So to do that, uh, I'm going to reduce the exposure down uh, quite a way. I'm going to come down about probably one and a half stops as you can see that I've used the slider you can always just click on that box there and type in minus 1.5 and return and that will give you that will give you the setting that you want um, so it's now it's quite dark you think well what we're we going to do with that right well firstly I'm going to uh, add some some lighting to the to the towers and I'm also going to try to pick up the shadows in the water so I do that by going into the masks module up here. Uh, I, I love the radial gradient feature. I think it's, it's fantastic. And what we can do is we can literally just pull out onto the tower um, a radial filter um, so that we can effectively illuminate this tower. Now, what I've done is put the dot near the bottom, which will be the highest part of the uh, the, the, the luminosity that we'll get. So as I write, as I raise the exposure now, you'll see that it will light from the bottom upwards. So I can make that a little bit wider so it covers the tower there. So, um, and it's obviously lighting this, this wall area here, which we, we don't want to do because we're sort of suggesting that light's coming from, from the sort of deck area upwards. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to now subtract this area. And I do that while still in this, this mask. Uh, I go to uh, subtract and I click brush. Now subtract means I get a minus brush. As you can see here, it's a, a minus brush. That means it's going to be removed. And I'm gonna reduce the feather down quite a lot, down to about 10. So we've got quite a hard, ed a hard edge and I'm going to put the flow at 100. So I want to completely remove anything that this brush picks up. 
Now I'm going to pick up on the on this line. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can you can see what we uh, what we're doing here. So I'm going to go into a hundred, holding down the the um, space bar. I can now left click my mouse and move move this to where I want it to be. So I can take this negative brush. I'm still in this filter radial fil radial gradient, and I, I'm just going to click so it lines up with the top of the bridge deck there. And I'm going to click once. And that's a subtraction, you saw that. Now, if I go over here, following that straight line, and hold down the Shift key, and put it in the same position, and click again, with the Shift key held down, it will draw a straight line. <clears throat> so we've now removed that up until there. We can do the same again to the edge of this deck area, holding down the Shift key, and I can work my way around this deck area, and just take away the, the radial gradient lighting. I make my brush bigger by wheeling my mouse or by using the square brackets to the left of the return key and then I can just take out the rest of that that there. Using the space key to move I can continue down to remove the rest of this uh, radial gradient that was there. So if I zoom back out to where we were and I hover over the uh, the mask key you can see there still is a little bit left uh, down there by the bottom on the water. And that's because I effectively, when I was in the brush, I had the auto mask ticked. Okay, so it was trying to hold on to the to the values that, that were in the center of the brush when I started. So if I unclick that, then I can redo that to completely get away from anything that's coming down. So now you can see that the radial is only lighting the tower, it's not right lighting downwards. So whilst I'm still on this, I'll go back to the radial gradient over here in the mask, and I'm just going to add some colour to that, just a little bit of, of temp and a little bit of magenta, just to make it look like they are um, lights that are lighting the tower. In fact, I'm going to go a bit higher, try and stretch that out a bit further up the tower. Looks quite nice. The only thing I, I will what I do notice, I'll make that a bit wider, is that I'm getting a halo on the sky in the background here because I'm lighting that sky away from this edge. Um, so we, we have to be a little bit careful with that. So what we need to do is remove the sky also from this. Now I could click the brush like we did and I could try and paint along those straight, straight, straight edges to remove it. Or um, we can subtract again. So we're on the radial gradient. We're going to subtract the sky so we can select the sky and it will automatically take the sky away. So when we now um, hover over the mask, you will see that the mask is only lighting the building, uh, the tower. It's not lighting the sky. It's not lighting the water. All right. So so that's how you define your mask when you're trying to put light in. Now, I want to do the same on the, the other one over here. So I could right click and duplicate this mask. Yeah, and then I can grab the, the center here and I can put it over here. But you'll notice, you see that the, the line that I used the brush on before is there because we've copied the mask and it doesn't line up perfectly with the other side. So in this case, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete the mask copy and I'm going to create a new mask. So I can do the same thing again. So again, radial gradient, uh, nice, nice tall one with the light down towards the bottom. So light that up like this, not too wide. And then I'm going to bring up the exposure and then bring up a little bit of color, and a little bit of magenta. Now you might be thinking, why is he bringing all this color in? Because he's going to turn this image into black and white. And I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when doing black and white in Lightroom is they they go immediately uh, to the black and white selection and turn the picture into black and white straight away. And then they work with the black and white to try to get what they want. But what you end up with is quite a flat image. You don't get the depth that we were talking about earlier. And by keeping the picture as far as you reasonably can in color, and adding color contrast as well as light contrast, when you finally switch to black and white, you have more to play with uh, when, you, when you come to light um, the area, give that dramatic feel. So 
I'm just going to finish just going to finish this one off so I'm going to subtract the sky so I've done that and I'm going to on the radio you have to click back on the radio subtract a brush my settings feather 10 flow from before are still there I'm going to zoom in to 100% hold down the space bar and again I'm just going to come in here click once hold down the shift key and click again and then just work my way around holding the shift key down and then I'm just going to paint out the remainder of the radial gradient from the scene I will zoom back so now we've got the tower illuminated the same as the other one here so this one probably needs to be a little bit brighter so I will go click back onto the radial gradient there um, so I'm on it and uh, I will make it just a little bit brighter and I might even make it just a little bit wider here we go so that's looking that's looking pretty good quite happy with the way it's lit up there so um, so now still going with uh, with the radial gradient I think at the top of this tower you can see this cross beam is illuminated inside this and that doesn't look quite natural so what I really need to do is remove the radial from that area as well so I'm going to zoom in again and uh, I'm just going to go to the top there again going to the brush that I used to to remove it previously I'm just going to make my brush smaller I'm going to make it the size of that rail here we go and I'm going to click there once come away from the rail over here hold down the shift key and click away um, and you can see that it has missed a couple of bits so I'm going to go in a bit closer I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm just going to paint out the radial gradient lighting from there as well and I'm going to come along here I'm just going to paint that out there so that looks that looks better so let's zoom back out so that's good we've got some light on there so create another another radial gradient uh, and I want to put some light now um, in the water and on the on on the bridge piers uh, to make it look like light is coming from a different angle here so it's a bit of trial and error uh, in this case I'm going to pull a, a radial gradient out like this and I'm going to uh, uh, make sure the feathers on 100 which it is and I'm going to raise raise that up just a little bit there add a little bit of color so that we've got now a contrast between this area and this area so it may think well that doesn't look very natural well at the moment it doesn't but what what we will do is we will use that uh, to give us uh, quite an interesting um, sort of take on contrast in a little while but before I go too much further I'm going to zoom in on that one that I've just done holding down the space bar to move the screen and I'm going to again subtract a brush okay this time I'm going to add a bit more feather about 40 percent on the feather flow still 100 put a bigger brush in here and what I want to do is make sure that we're not picking up this this area behind here so I'm just going to um, come in there and just pull that away from there so just come in like this and then just create a shadow line coming away um, so it looks a, a bit like the bridge this bridge is casting a shadow I'm going to come a bit further over so I'm just going to come up to to about here probably a bit far I'm going to uh, command Z or control Z to undo that twice to go back and I'm going to try and find where this shadow line might be when I think it's going to be about here so then I'm going to draw holding down the shift key and I'm just going to create that shadow line coming across there okay so that doesn't look too bad um, you saw there when I hovered over there's a bit over here I missed so I can I can just take that out as well let's move that across check again yeah make sure we've got nothing coming over here that looks fine same on the other side here just want to take this piece out and I want to create a shadow line from here outwards so I'm just going to hold down the shift key again and just bring that line out there and remove the rest of that so it's not lighting up those buildings in the distance and just take that out over this way now that's a very hard line in both cases is a very hard line uh, and so I want to soften that line so to soften that line within the brush I now change the flow to about 50% okay 
and then I now draw over that line 50-50, so half onto the, the shadow and half outside the shadow. So I click once, hold down the shift key and click again. And so now you get uh, a, a gradient in the in the level of, of, of radial filter that's being cut away. In fact, I'm gonna make the brush a bit smaller. I'm gonna hit that line again with the 50% to get that sort of effect of, of um, the shadow breaking up under there. I'm just going to control Z that again. There we go. And I'm just going to pop that back in there again, just to see. Yeah, happy with that. And the same over here, just going to take a 50% on that line as well. Just to take this a little bit of softness into that edge. So that's that's not looking too bad. Quite happy with that. Uh, need to do something similar with the other bridge pier. Of course, I've got this post in the way here at the moment. So we're going to take uh, and create a new mask, a new radial gradient. We're going to pop it on this bridge, 50% on the water, 50% on the bridge pier. And we're going to bring up the, the brightness here. A bit of color, match, a little bit of magenta. I think I'll add a bit of magenta to that one as well, just to be on the safe side. That's nice, not too bright. I'm going to zoom in space bar to move it and then I'm going to subtract again a brush go back to flow 100 um, and I'm just going to make the feather a little bit less this time because it's further away it will be more acute I'm just going to come around to that edge there and then take a shot across there and the same here we need to bring this in here and create that shadow line coming across just going to go to 50% on the flow just to soften those over that side. Now, of course, we don't want to light up this, this post. So we can go back to 100%, bring the feather right the way down to zero because I want a really hard edge on this. And I'm going to click once, hold down the shift key to just make sure, click once, hold down the shift key to just make sure we're not illuminating this uh, this post and then just paint that out so we're not highlighting that we'll light this post separately in a moment so um, quite happy with that I think there so let's go back to the main screen so, so now we're adding more interest as you can see as we go through I want to emphasize the lighter water versus the darker water so I think what we should do is put a, a radial gradient in the center here and then we can copy that over to these other sides um, so also probably just going to take away that last bit of light over this side here. It's distracting on the other side of that post. Okay, so create a new mask, create another radial gradient. And this time we're going to pop it probably somewhere in the middle like this. Now again, we can always move it, but I'm just going to bring up the, the brightness to see where it sits uh, with this. Now, do I want it down here? No, do I want it up here? Possibly, I think probably around there. Going to bring a bit of colour in again to that, which is nice. Now we are lighting through and catching the bridge this time and the buildings behind, but we do want to remove the sky. So again, subtract the sky from that shot. I mean, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to just going to undo that, undo that by Control Z because I want to be sure that we're not we're not actually making the buildings darker. So again, I'm going to subtract the sky as I watch. And no, it's okay. So that, that's that's good. So I also want to use this to light these areas up. So I can, again, I can duplicate the mask because now all I've got is subtract sky. And then I can move this across over here and then click on it just to make it a little bit wider. Now I need to find a good place to sit that light. So I think that looks okay, maybe. Make it a little bit longer, that's working good. And I'm gonna copy it again, so a duplicate mask. I don't duplicate the radial filter because I want to keep all of the attributes uh, that are being used for the, uh, for the radial gradient. So I'm gonna pop that over this side over here. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna make that wider. So we like that, that sort of area over to the right there. 
So here we have removed the sky because that was already part of the mask function, but we've added more light to this side here. So I do want to remove that from this, this particular uh, gradient. Um, so I'm just going to go to subtract brush again. I'm going to zoom in back onto that part of the building. And then we're just going to go in and take the edge We've got a hard feather at the moment to take that, that line down the edge there, holding the shift key down and then just coming around here, making the brush a little bit smaller, painting around this because we don't really want to brighten this area. So brush bigger and we're just going to take that radial out where it's lighting this extra. So just make sure we've got all of that. Bigger brush still. Yep come down here and then just take that out of there. Do I want to do that? No, I don't. I only want it to really stay on the tower. So let's go back. So using the command Z or control Z, I can move back as many places as I like there. So again, I'm going to go in on the tower here, shift to do a straight line and that so I just want to keep it on that top. I don't want that top to get too any brighter. I'm, I'm okay with this area down here being a little bit brighter. There's a hard edge there. So I'm going to increase my feather to 100. And I'm just going to come in here and down to the waterline, but no further. And then cut across there. And then I'm just going to take that bit out that's on, that's on there. It's looking pretty good. So the water is still illuminated in that area. I'm quite happy with that. Um, so let's zoom back out. Now this post, we need to we need to raise some interest with this post here. So um, whilst we're still in this radial, which is covering this, I could look at trying to open the shadows, and that seems to have helped a little bit. Um, but it's also brightened up this end of the bridge quite a lot, as you can see. But I'm going to open it a little bit. Um, and I'm going to deal with this separately because it's not it's not really picking up on it. So we'll do that in a second. I'm going to go back over to this other radio over here. Um, and I'm just going to open the shadows up on that one a little bit as well. I think that's quite nice. And let's just try the one in the centre as well. Just open up the shadows. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, so let's deal with this post. So we're going to take, um, create another mask, another radial gradient. And I'm going to illuminate from the sort of uh, bottom up. Now you can rotate your your radials by just grabbing outside the box, and then you can wheelie them to to get them where you want them. I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger. We're going to bring up the exposure on this, and we're going to kick up the the clarity, okay? Because it always good and a little bit of contrast. And now we've got to remove the radial from around it. So what I could try is I could try to subtract the subject, which is inside this, and then I could, um, with the subject selected, I could uh, um, invert the subject. It doesn't really work, so I'm going to undo that Command Z, um, and I'm going to take away the subject here. So click the three dots and you can delete the subject mask there. So instead, radial gradient, I'm going to subtract the brush. We're going to zoom in on this post. So let's do that. And we're going to go around the post. So I need quite a small feather, probably only about 20%, quite a small feather, but flows it 100. And I'm just going to go around the outside of this post so if I've got a straight line, I can use the shift click method coming in there. I don't want that line of, of brightness there, almost a halo. So I'm going to have to cut in slightly more. Um, and then I'm going to come in here again, straight, straight click down to here. Still a line there, still too bright. So I'm going to just over, overcut that to remove that edge. Um, and then we're going to go around, around this piece down here. So remember, we're subtracting, moving the brush smaller, we're subtracting the, the radial gradient as we do it with the, the subtraction brush. So I'm just going to go around there, make my brush bigger again. And I'm going to go in there 
Let's sit a little bit there. So what's really important is, is that we do leave the shadow also illuminated. Okay, so when we, we come into the water here, I'm going to change the feather slightly. So let me just go up the other side and, uh, and just cover off this side as well. I'm just going to darken that piece out in the center as well. It's a bit bright. So coming up there. back to where we were at the top make my brush bigger and now I can go back round and take out a little bit more of that that um, radial gradient there so click there using the shift again to get that straight line coming out here and uh, yeah that's looking pretty good so same on that side just make sure I've got that colored right I'll do the rest of that in a moment but now we get down to the water. So we do really want to, whilst on the brush, increase the feather. I'm gonna to go to like 75 because the shadow will be diffused. So I'm gonna go back in on that edge, like as we did before, like that. And then I'm gonna strike down and up to get this sort of feathered line appearing in the water. So just come away from that to out, out here a little bit. That's it, so you, as you can see, it's sort of blended more when you get in the water area. So I'm gonna, gonna take the feather off, no need for it now. I'm gonna zoom right out and I can just finish, just finish off the rest uh, of that uh, area there. So I've got a nice hard brush, it's, it's at 100% zero feather and I can then just take out the rest of that uh, radial gradient. So we can hover over it to see, yep, it's only that that's left illuminated. So whatever we do now is only on that post. So we, we have made it quite bright. You know, you can make it brighter if you want. It gets a bit surreal, but I'm going to make it quite a bit brighter there like that. Add a bit of colour to it. A bit of magenta. Maybe open up the shadows a little bit. And maybe still increase that contrast just a little bit more. So we've got a foreground element now. So I'm pretty happy, I think, where we are with, with, with the light um, on the bridge. And uh, I think there may be a need to be a little bit of light over here. So I'm going to create another radial gradient. I'm going to put it just out off to the edge here. And I'm going to just illuminate that area ever so slightly, add in some color with temp and tint. I'm going to subtract the sky just to make sure there's no glow there which is pretty good. Okay, so all that's really left to do now is the sky. So we can, we can select the sky, as you know, we can create a new mask and we can select the sky. Um, but I think I've shown you this before, when you select the whole sky, anything you do to it is uniformly done in that mask. And so if I reduce the exposure as, as a whole item, what you end up with, and I've done it a lot there to show you, you end up with this halo effect around the edges, okay? And it doesn't look necessarily quite uh, quite realistic. So what I like to do is take the sky uh, mask that we've selected, go to the three dots, click again, and then intersect mask with, and then go to linear gradient, and then I can pull that down over the scene from this side. So now I've got 100% to 0%, but only in the sky. So now if I apply you can see it darkens down. You're still getting a little bit of halo on the edge there, which is a little bit difficult. Um, so you have to be you have to be cautious. Um, I'm just going to rotate that a little bit more this way uh, and be cautious what we're doing there. So I'm going to put a bit of contrast in the sky and I'm going to put some clarity into the sky. Okay, now I've got the uh, the sky and the linear gradient on that side. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to create again, select the sky, three dots intersect with a linear gradient and I'm going to come in from this side uh, and I'm going to add a slight change in colour. It doesn't look natural but remember we're going black and white and if the colour's not right go black and white but we're actually making the colour not right to give us that colour contrast when we move into to the next scene. So, um, so I'm going to go with that 
um, happy with that. So I'm going to get, I'm going to accept that. But what I want to do with the sky is I do need more, more in the sky. I need more of this detail, more of this contrast. So what I'm going to do is open and uh, create another mask, and this time just a brush. I'm going to put the feather to 100% and the flow to 50. I'm going to because we're going to dodge and burn, I'm going to do the light bits first. So I'm going to bring the exposure up slightly and the highlights up slightly. And I'm going to put in some, some clarity. Remember, we can always change things. So uh, I can always add or reduce that later. Um, and then I'm just going to take a reasonable size brush. And where the light areas are, is just light into those areas. In fact, what I might also do is click the auto mask. Um, so when I pick up on a light area, it generally just lights. Changing your brush size regularly just to get a different effect. It's a bit strong, so I'm going to Control Z and just go back because I, I think I want to rethink those brushes slightly. So, um, so create a brush. This time I'm going to reduce that flow down even more. I'm going to bring up that exposure, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of highlight and some clarity and um, make sure that the auto mask on it is and I'm just going to try again to bring those areas up a little bit brighter that's it same over here so the brighter areas will just be illuminated a little bit more dodge and burning if you like that's what we're effectively doing and a little bit inside the bridge there that's it I'm just going to pick up a little bit on this water as well over here That's looking good. Then I'm going to create another mask, uh, brush again, but this time it's going to be the opposite. So I'm going to have slightly lower exposure, still some contrast, and still some clarity. And now I'm going to take the darker areas, and I'm just going to work the darker areas a little bit darker as we come through. So we create more of that, that sort of contrast in the sky so where it's darker it shows as darker so just bring that in it's starting to look like a real london sky now so we've created a little bit more in the way of uh, contrast in the sky you know i'm going to actually increase the contrast a little bit more and the clarity just a little bit more and i'm going to go back to the previous mask number 10 and i'm going to do the same i'm just going to add Bit more contrast clarity is okay but i'm gonna make it a little bit brighter there we go so that's looking good in fact with the brighter one i'm actually just going to pick up a little bit more on the towers there just a little bit further up just gonna just gonna pick up on those and i'm gonna add reduce the um reduce the feather down because it's going to light up this these rails slightly as well so i'm just gonna up these rails across here using the shift key there we go just to light those up a little bit off to the edge there and just picking up a little bit of a little bit of light just dodging and burning a little bit okay that's looking i think we're almost there ready to go black and white i think the last thing i'm going to do is going to add one more mask with a brush and i'm going to just have some clarity about 40 so i want to pick up uh, on the on the bridge here I don't want to go too far over the edge because we'll create a halo um, so we've just got clarity there uh, I've got quite a tight feather so I'm just going to stay inside the uh, using the shift to get the straight lines I'm just going to stay inside the tower just to bring these up a little bit more staying inside the tower there so I'm not creating that halo on the edge I'm not emphasizing that and just brushing that in I'm going to pop a bit there as well on the bridge sections on this on the bridge deck here just doing that and I'm just going to pick up here as well so it's looking pretty good those buildings in the background and the walkie-talkie building as it's called that's good yeah, now I'm, I'm pretty well ready to go to black and white. One thing I've noticed I don't like is this bridge um, 
suspension arm coming out here is illuminated here. Now remember, because we've got all of the, the masks non-destructive, we can go back to the original mask uh, here, number one. So you can see it there is lighting up the bridge. And I can go back to the subtraction brush and I can zoom in on that bridge pier and I can just, I can take that out. Remember it, you can just work your way back using the shift key just to give us the straight line reductions. How are we doing for, need a bit, bring the flow up a little bit more. We need that to remove it completely. That's it. And we're just gonna remove the radial just getting in there shift and to get the straight line take the auto mask off Same again, just underneath, just to come away so we can take that out of there. And I'm afraid we've just got to uh, do these white stanchions as well, so we just need to be a little bit careful in there. So it looks a little bit more natural as though the light is actually falling uh, behind this rather than in front of this. It may seem a small detail, but you've got to get your light, your light angles looking right. Uh, otherwise it will detract people's eye from, uh, from what's really going on and they will just pick up on something that doesn't look natural uh, and they will look at it thinking, well, that doesn't look natural. So, uh, get that last piece in there. There we go, that's not too bad. Just that edge. There you go. And there, I'm going to go with that. I think that works okay. Are these, are these new doing? No. Right, so we zoom out. That looks better. Yeah, much happier with that. So, um, yeah, I think we're ready to go black and white. Just want to deal with that little edge of that uh, wall that was down the bottom there. Let's try using the, uh, the healing uh, spot tool there. We can just uh, start to paint just on the edge of it so that 50% of your brush is on it and 50% is not. And then just go up and down and then move down to the bottom there, holding down the mouse all the time and let go. And um, I'm just going to bring that onto the screen here um, and we'll select clone and see if it's got rid of it i think it has let's click done you can just see a line edge there because of the difference in color um, so i'm going to go back into it select it we'll go back to heal and see uh, how and we're going to put a bit more feather in Is that working? I'm not sure it is. Let's have a look. Click done. Yeah, not working. It's got a bit of a dark corner there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that one. The, feather, the um, spot tool. So I did feather it a few times. That's the little wall there, so update brush. I'm just going to put that back. Redo right, so we'll go back into spot healing tool there. We'll leave it on clone, quite a high feather, full of occupancy. And I'm going to come a bit further out this time just to see if we can actually remove it, move it somewhere around here. Let's see with that click done. 
Yeah. That's got it. Perfect. Okay, so now we're ready to go black and white. So after all of that, here's our black and white um, switch effectively, the button where we press to, to change to black and white. So we've gone straight black and white, still looks relatively flat, and the towers do look uh, rather exaggerated. So, that, so we need to just add more, more detail in a black and white way. And we can do that by uh, now having a look at the contrast and the clarity particularly, and maybe a little bit of texture. I might add a little bit of texture to this image. Not too much. Texture is so powerful. A bit more clarity. Be careful with that clarity because we've got quite a lot in there already. And I'm going to bring up the, the, uh, the contrast. Now I'm going to bring up the exposure overall. I'm going to bring that up. It's not too bad. So we've got something, these, these towers are too bright. So remember, non-destructive, we have these masks. We can go back to mask one and we can bring that down. And we can go to mask two. And we can also bring that down as well. So that we don't get too, too much there biting us. Um, so what I'm also gonna do now is add another, add another mask, this time a, a linear gradient from the top coming down and I'm going to uh, uh, just just bring that down. Just make it a little bit darker from the, from the, from the top. Now it's it's making the top of the towers dark. So what I can do, okay, and this is this is a little bit of a trick is I can subtract the sky, right? You might think, well, why would you do that? Because obviously the sky is the bit that you're trying to dim. But then I use the invert of the sky, okay. So effectively, the, this area uh, lights back up again. So if I take the eye out, you'll see. Can you see there that you're getting that, the, the, the lightness on the towers, but the sky still gives you the darkness. I'm going to grab another mask, another linear gradient. I'm going to bring it up from the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to oh, go negative on that as well, just to give some depth there. Now this top one here, which one was it? I think it was that one. Yeah, I think it was this one. I'm going to, the one we previously, I'm going to um, probably do another another one actually because I, I think it's quite a nice look here. So I'm going to uh, go back to linear gradient and I'm gonna pull another shorter one in from up above here. I'm going to darken that again as well. So we've got real a real sort of contrast coming from that side. Yeah, and, and this area down the bottom here also needs a little bit more darkness as well. So create another linear gradient and pull it in from the bottom this way, coming across like this, and uh, darken that down as well. Not too much, because it will pull it away a little bit. It's very dark here in this, in where this tower is, a bit too dark. So you can always, again, subtract a brush, have it on relatively low flow, lots of feather, and I can just remove that gradient there so it, it's not quite as dark as you can see. That's not looking too dark there. So, um, so yeah, I, I think we're, uh, we're pretty close to being, to being done. The very last thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna accept all the masks and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to effectively uh, use the B&W, the black and white module, which is normally your, your uh, HSL module, but because we're in black and white, because we left all that color in, we can now affect the colors separately. So if I give the blue, for example, if I move the blue, which was predominantly the sky, I can make the sky brighter or darker and not the other areas, so only the blues. So it could take a little bit out of the sky with a little bit out on, on, on the blue there. Um, the yellows, which is predominantly the, the sort of lighting that we did, we can raise those areas or, or reduce them. So I'm gonna raise those actually to give you a little bit more in here. Same with the oranges, that sort of shows on the towers. So you can always pick that up just a little bit. And uh, the reds are like contrast to the orange there in this shot. Um, I don't think we had a lot of purple 
or, uh, or magenta to play with. Yeah, I think we're I think we're pretty good. I think we're pretty good. The only thing I'm wondering is we may have a little bit too much clarity on the tower. So I'm going to go back into the masks. I'm going to find where I did the clarity, which was mask 12. I'm going to go down to the clarity slider and I'm going to back that off. I'm just going to back that off a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of texture and bring the the, the, the clarity back down. So um, I'm going to come in at about about 10. I think that's, that's quite a good place. Yeah, not looking too bad. Just going to re recheck the brightness on those. So I'm going back to mask one. And uh, that's overall, sorry, click mask one. There we go. Not too bright there. And mask two. Just check those again. Because it's non-destructive, as we say, we can we can always we can always play uh, with those with the sliders later. Go back to the masks and where we are. So I'm just going to accept that. Is there any final adjustments I need? Should I should I increase the contrast, decrease the contrast, maybe slightly, maybe decrease decrease it slightly? Yeah. I can brighten the shadow, uh, bring the highlights back up a little bit just to get a bit more contrast there. Where are we with the whites? It's not too bad. So let's just look at the before and after. So if we uh, if we go back, we can click reset, go back to where we were. There we go. That's where we were before. Um, and of course, I can go into history and I can go back to where we are when we're finished. So that's our before. And there's our after. Real black and white drama. Last thing, let's stick in a bit of a vignette. Not too much, about minus 10 and feather that right out. And I'm going to say that's a done black and white drama for Tower Bridge. Yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial. And uh, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments. And... Uh, and subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.